YouTube channel. My name is Delia Folk, and this is my mom, Allison Ray. And today we are here in the New York outpost of White Cube Gallery with Victoria Hawkins. We met Victoria this summer at an event in the Hamptons, and so we wanted to create a video to make visiting an art gallery seem less intimidating. So Victoria, do you want to introduce yourself and White Cube? Yes. Um, my name is Victoria and I've worked for White Cube for about eight years now. And then a year ago, almost, we opened up this outpost of White Cube in New York, which is very different from our big galleries we have in London. But this is like a smaller, uh, more intimate gallery that we can introduce people to art and look after them and take them on a journey where they can learn about art as well. So let's start right in with when you're visiting an art gallery, are there questions that you should make sure to ask? And then also are there questions that you should probably not ask? <laughs> um, I think you, the, you should not be afraid to ask any question. I think you should feel open enough to be able to ask whatever you want so you can get the information you want. Unfortunately, I think um, there is a little bit of a stereotype with the art world that you shouldn't be asking questions because we don't encourage you to ask questions. And for example, there's this work here, there's no information on it anywhere on the wall, there's no, no nature, no dimensions, nothing. So we don't make it easy for you. But having said that, don't feel that that means you can't ask. How can you figure out how much something costs? Is that something that you can ask? Yes. Or you can ask, in any commercial gallery like this where works for sale, you can always ask the price of things. And um, nine times out of 10, things will be for sale. And remember, a gallery in many ways um, is a functioning consumer experience. We're a shop, mm -hmm. albeit for art. And um, so we are here to also enc like encourage you to learn and love about art and as a part of that we can give you the prices for work so just ask. And can you visit an art gallery even if you think that you're not wanting to yes. purchase? Yes, 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 yes. Um, anyone can visit a gallery. Um, again, this is another way that we don't make it maybe the most friendly uh, experience but yeah, you can always um, visit. Um, usually all websites have opening hours and things like that so as long as you stick to those times you can go. If you have anyone that you know that works in a gallery just get in touch with them and you go to them first and they can kind of help you basically and then say oh you should also go here or here um, and before you know it you'll start picking up um, places to go and what to see. Okay, and then so we, let's say that we came in and wanted to acquire a piece of art, can we try and negotiate the price or is it final, no conversation? Yeah, I mean, I think usually there is an element of negotiation. I will say that's not very much. Mm -hmm. um, uh, because of how you price the work with the artist, you don't want to be given huge discounts because you've kind of agreed for that artist that you will make help make them X amount and sell their work mm -hmm. in whatever terms. Um, so you want to give them the best deal you can. But again, the gallery does have the ability to speak to the artist and say, look, well, actually, I've got these people that are really interested in this work. I think it would be really good for you mm -hmm. to sell this work. How about on this one, we offer like a little 10% discount or something like that. Mm -hmm. And usually there is an understanding that we can make that happen. Mm -hmm. Not always, mm -hmm. but right. that, that, there is that possibility. So that leads into the next question nicely. So is the price different for a regular person that comes in high net worth individual and or a museum? Always the same. Huh? Whoever you are, the price should always be the same. If you find somehow that that's, that's different, not then that alarm bell should start ringing. Okay. You, the price should be the same to everyone and it shouldn't discriminate. Okay. 
from going to art galleries, I have heard that, let's say, multiple people want to acquire one piece of artwork. How does the gallery then choose who gets to have that piece? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that actually happens more often than you think it would, and it's a bit of a kind of uh, negotiation between the gallery and those clients to place it. I'm not saying that's always easy. Right. <laughs> um, sometimes it's simply a case of whoever you saw it. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. whoever got here first, um, as the same as it would be in a shop. If you were to go and buy a dress, if that's the last size of that dress, the person who buys it gets that dress. Right. Like, right. And then there's no more. So it's mm -hmm. it's a little bit the same the same kind of procedure. So why is it important for an artist to work with an art gallery? So for example, there they'll be the PR or help them get into museums. What is the relationship between them? So it's quite a complex relationship between artists and Karen because you're working very uh, closely together all the time. Actually, I don't need to tell you too about that. You have a good experience of that. Um, and so there are ups and downs, but the idea is that um, an artist is really at their best when they're being creative and they're producing. Mm -hmm. And anything that takes away from that, um, so them having to think about how to get exhibitions, how to market themselves, how to do the PR for themselves, mm -hmm. how to sell, that all takes away from their creative time. So that's where a gallery comes in to try and support them and take that off them. Mm -hmm. And because of our gallery functions, we have all those connections that we can make that and we can put them in touch with like museum curators, we can try and sell their work and we can create those links for them, which then they can reuse in the future, mm -hmm. but it just allows them That's nice. almost not to have to worry about that side of it. And just to push themselves. Yeah, on. exactly. Okay, so if you love art and you're interested in it, but not necessarily able to purchase or wanting to purchase, can and should you still be visiting art galleries and museums? Yes, yes, um, totally. And you can you can visit any um, gallery, even a commercial gallery like this. Um, you can definitely visit. I would say it's probably easier to visit some of the bigger ones. Mm -hmm which almost appear as public galleries um, but then museums and institutions are for everyone that's why they're created and um, yeah again I would just go to one that's nearest to you where you mm -hmm. live and start with that one and explore and mm -hmm. see what you like from that and then after that you can go to something else but yeah I think you should always go <laughs> this has just been delightful Thank you so much for joining us today on The Style That Binds Us. We've had a wonderful conversation. We've gotten a lot of answers about the art world from our friend Victoria Hawkins with White Cube Gallery. Um, please check back in next week for our next video and remember to like and subscribe. We love producing content that you request. Yeah.